look at the financial year, one side of it's been positive. If you look at the end of 2019 compared to, to early 2020, um, just in terms of um, uh, the work that we've done um, as an organisation. Um, and I think just in terms of the growth, I think we've continued to grow. What has been in our plan since 2001, when we first established, I think, the early learning centre that's come to fruition for this financial year, which is amazing, to have all of everything sort of line up, not just the infrastructure for, to build it, but also purchase the property to go with it. For us, it's unique just in terms of when we do finally open, we're going to not just have the infrastructure and the building, but we're going to have a cultural um, model that's going to operate, that's going to have that cultural lens right across it. So it's not just going to be like when you walk into our building, we're going to have a model that's going to encapsulate culture right throughout so it'll have song and dance language throughout it the landscape with the early learning center with the play area outside it's going to also lend itself to them to have that opportunity to learn all about the traditional owner and particularly with Jaja Rung as you know first people of this where it's built on got other things that we're actually working on at the moment too so there's other things that we will are progressing which um, I won't share at the moment but there there are a lot of other things that we're progressing having the early learning center right on site actually it's like we've got this whole sort of um, multifaceted um, service that um, our community have access to I think that's one of the key milestones for for 2019-20 for this financial year and for this, you know, that I'm feeling really proud of. As an organisation, I think we really swung into being reactive, but I think in a good way because we, we knew what to do with our, um, as an organisation and what we needed to do to protect community. We were making calls to elders every two days, that's now gone to once a week, just because the elders have asked for that, but we had elders that we knew were struggling that said, stop bringing me this other person struggling. So everyone was looking out for each other, which we thought was great. We saw the potential for it to really ravage community and to you know, really affect our patients negatively. Um, but I think everyone's banded together really well and worked well together as a team. Probably the biggest positive was that so far our community hasn't been affected by COVID-19. I think that I'm really proud of the way we set up a, a testing clinic um, within a week, um, which is still running now. For us, it was making sure that everything was lining up, but then how do we do that the right way? and to be able to be flexible in how we still continue to provide a service. We've tried to um, ensure that services are you know, accessible to people. So, you know, having telephone appointments, having telehealth appointments where you can have a video consultation has been really vital. We uh, started eScript, so we're able to um, have patients on the phone to the doctor and then have their scripts at the pharmacy and sometimes delivered, who delivered the medication without the patient leaving out. It, from a medical point of view, it's been both hard but also you know, quite rewarding in that uh, the flexibility I think has been really, really helpful in getting community through this time. Our service, if anything, has actually been ramped up. Um, we always think about um, flexibility but I think, if anything, we have increased our level of um, contact with community. I think that's one of the key things I can say that's come out of COVID is the level of um, engagement over this um, with COVID, even though you know it's a it's a really negative time, but I think one of the key things that I can say genuinely is we've increased our level of engagement in contact with community. The last thing we want out of COVID is for someone to be undiagnosed with another problem. So it's really important for us that um, community that need to be seen are being seen. Um, we have part of the transport policy now that we've brought in is that if the community member needs to be here and has no means of getting here, we'll, we'll make sure they're here. Even before coronavirus, people couldn't travel sometimes for very valid reasons. 
um, being able to reach them at their home or reach them you know, at the place where they currently are is invaluable because it means that you know, someone that may have otherwise foregone you know, necessary medical care and then had an adverse outcome um, is then getting exactly what they need. The staff and the team were really thinking outside the box because we were really, um, and everyone was just being really creative but considered around our approach. We're not just a medical service for this year, we're a medical service for this person's, for people's lives. Um, so, you know, their preventative health is really, really important and doing things like our health assessments, you know, coming in for regular checkups, getting that mole on your neck checked out, all those sorts of, you know, pretty simple things, um, you know, sometimes get overlooked when we think that we've got bigger fish to fry, that we've got bigger problems. We haven't seen what it looks like to come out of COVID. I know that Raylene and I have been working together a lot to think about what what will come after COVID. We know that there, there may be people suffering now that haven't come and seen us and we, we are thinking about them and encourage them to come and see us. You have to think about your health, not just this year, but in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, if we want to keep everyone as happy and healthy as they possibly can. I'd like to thank all the staff. I know it's been a really challenging year. Um, everyone's adapted really, really well. It has been challenging for staff to work differently. Going from working from the office and then changing that up to working from home was like a massive um, task in itself, but we actually did it. We, um, we did it well, I have to say. The proudest thing we can take out of this year is COVID-19 could have really hurt our population and every Aboriginal person in the state has done their job. Um, we, there was a sm small number of people infected but they all recovered. Um, I cannot be more prouder of how our community were with COVID-19. Um, I look forward to the future. I can't wait till we can get all our groups back um, and you know as Raylene said talk about all the new programs and services we have coming and the quicker we get to next year the better.